What's up, YouTube? Today's video, we're going to go over the top five most common items or uniques in Arch Nemesis League. And this is all gathered from PoE Ninja. At this point in the league, you can pretty much assume that the places won't really change that much. There's not going to be that many more characters to really change the rankings on PoE Ninja. And it kind of gives us a good look at how the meta ended up going for the Arch Nemesis League. And potentially maybe some nerfs that might be coming up to some of these super, super popular new uniques that have came out. Now, before we get started, we could probably check a, take a look at Scourge League and then be able to compare and see what exactly changed from Scourge League to Arch Nemesis League. Now, a lot of this is usually just the meta of the builds. Like, for instance, last league, one of the uh, items I didn't think would be up here was Thread of Hope. But the last league's most popular build was CI Flicker along with Cast on Crit Ice Nova. So it only makes sense that you want the Thread of Hope for CI Flicker, I think, for like Lancing Blows or something. And it also helps out with CI Cast on Crit Ice Spear, right? And then you can also see that Bottle Faith and Watcher Sight is pretty high up there. So if you were a betting man, you'd probably put the house on Watcher Sight being number one again, right? And Bottle Faith is probably going to be up there. Headhunter is probably definitely up there too, right? Because of all of the juice content on the maps. And Thread of Hope, probably not going to be up there anymore if I had to guess. Mage Blood, probably not going to be up there, right? Because Headhunter is just a lot better. But who knows? Maybe we'll see some new groundbreaking uniques in the top 5. Because everyone loves an underdog story. So first off, actually surprisingly enough, we have number 5, Dying Sun, right? Now, Dying Sun is an item that is pretty much being used because you can see the main skill link. So if you ever want to see what builds are being played with the skill, you click the Dying Sun and you can see that Tornado Shot is number 1, the Ice Spear, Kinetic Blast, Winter Orb, and there's also some Cast on Crit Ice Spear people, and Forbidden Right. So this item is pretty much on the list because of the popularity of Tornado Shot. Last time around, let's see, you didn't see Dying Sun anywhere near here. And this is pretty much just because Tornado Shot carried it a lot. And almost every single new build that actually has a lot of projectile shooting out does benefit from Dying Sun. And I do think that Winter Orb actually got a lot more popular this time around with more people trying to play it because of the increase to single target damage. And then Cast on Crit Ice Spear is also super popular and so is Forbidden Right. In fact... Forbidden Right actually uses the Helm Enchant that gives you an additional projectile. And Forbidden Right also benefits from the additional area on Dying Sun. So usually, it seems like flasks are always going to be up there for unique flasks. People almost always run one unique flask at the very least. And it really depends on what build they are playing, which unique flask they'll choose. And Bottle Faith is the next one, right? The so Bottle Faith actually was number two last time, and now it's fallen to number four. And part of the reason why is probably because of the projectile builds, right? So Dying Sun definitely took a chunk out of the Bottle Faith builds. Now Bottle Faith is mainly used in Lightning Strike and Cast on Crypt builds. There's a lot of Cast on Crypt builds actually that do employ using both Bottle Faith and Dying Sun. Now Bottle Faith is kind of important that you're kind of nearby the enemy. So when you drop the Consecrated Ground, that the Consecrated Ground will be on top of the enemy. And... One of the coolest things is that if you actually buy the Battle Pass, so I actually got a Bottle of Faith, and you can actually put this MTX on. I'm not advocating people to go buy the MTX, but cool thing about this flash is look at the Consecrated Ground. It actually shows the effect of it. So it's pretty cool. I don't think actually a lot of people know about the Battle Pass. I've had a lot of people tell me that there's a Battle Pass in the game, and they were pretty surprised when I told them, yeah, there is a Battle Pass. So if you actually... I've missed out on the game. There's a new Bottle Faith MTX that's pretty pay to win for telling you where exactly the Consecrated Ground is. So this is extremely good for crit builds and it gives a 10% more damage multiplier. A lot of people don't know when you look at the Bottle Faith and it says Consecrated Ground created during effect applies 7% increased damage taken. This is pretty much like a more damage multiplier. And this roll is actually incredibly important. So when you roll a bottle of faith, make sure that this number is 10% and not 7, right? Even if the crit chance is higher. Now this item has actually been nerfed a couple times. Most of the flasks have been nerfed a lot. Even Dying Sun, one of the things they did to nerf the flask was they reduced the duration or increased the charges used back in Expedition League where they decided to gut every single flask in the game. 
Now before you can see that it used to give like plus one to two base crit chance. So this is like huge compared to what it is now today, which is a hundred to one hundred fifty percent crit chance, which is pales in comparison to that, right? So some common bottle faith builds include lightning strike, more cast on crit builds, spark, and summon skeletons involve summon skeletons. Now next up we have our first new unique that GGG introduced. It is actually Ashes of the Star. Now Ashes of the Star is mainly an item that is super super strong because it gives you plus one skill gems. And that helps out for a lot of spell builds. So we go look at Ashes of the Star here. Most people are actually able to benefit from the plus one skill gems. If we take a look at the item, it gives you increased XP, which actually helps out a lot if you decide to do Simulacrum or something like that. It also gives you reservation of efficiency of skills. Now, one important thing to know about this is that it's actually just plain reservation efficiency. And this is huge because this also applies for life reservation efficiency and mana reservation efficiency, right? So if you're playing like a low life build or something like that, it is pretty hard to get life reservation efficiency outside of like Prism Guardian or stuff like that. And that one note on a tree for the aura mastery. So this amulet is extremely, extremely strong for aura stackers that go, that reserve auras on their life pool. And it also helps out on almost every single spell build. Now the next part about this amulet that's really nice and I do think that adds a lot of build diversity into the game is the plus 30% quality of all skills, of all skill gems, right? So this allows skills like Phantasmal Cremation, which gives an extra explosion to be more viable. Also allows you to troubleshoot a lot of the issues with Spark and that you can get your Pierce fixed or you can get your projectile speed fixed or you can even get the amount of projectiles you shoot out. So this item is extremely, extremely versatile. It pretty much can fit in any spell build that uses auras or any skill gem that benefits a lot from alternate quality or just levels in general. So that's why this item is number three on the list. So next up, we have Forbidden Flame and Flesh. Now these are the new unique jewels. Now when these jewels first came out and people saw them, they thought these jewels were going to be like, say, a mirror or two or multiple mirrors for a good set and this is just not really the case i think these jewels were much cheaper and much more common than originally anticipated pretty much able to guarantee to farm them a lot faster with um what's it called this thing here 25 percent increased chance to drop forbidden flesh but the biggest thing is that a lot of people started running boss rush atlases and running boss rush atlases mean you spawn a lot of the invitations so that there was a pretty consistent supply of them so this uh, jewel is pretty much really useful is because it can pretty much benefit any single build in the class. If you go on paw but you look at any of these builds, you can pretty much find something really strong to take for these two points. Like one of the coolest concepts is honestly Berserker Accuracy Stacker because you can steal the Unstoppable node. Some people steal like Fortify on Champion. Some people steal Gratuitous Violence. Some people steal Overleech. And then other people steal the flask node on Master Surgeon for Pathfinder. And yeah, I don't think... And you can take Swift Killer, which is super strong. And then you can also take Profane Bloom or Corvus Pack to fix issues. So this item is extremely strong. It makes builds a lot more diverse in that you're able to unlock some more layers or some customizations for your build. And even fix issues that are usually unable to be fixed right before they introduce this gem. Now it's also important to consider a lot of people don't know the value of the two jewel sockets. So for instance, like the aura stacker, sometimes you don't want to use these jewels because jewel sockets are at such a premium because you're using so many small clusters. And you do have to note that the two jewel sockets do usually add up to around a good chunk of life and up to around like 20% damage, right? So make sure the thing you're taking for the forbidden flame and flesh is something that actually provides like more value than just pure damage. So lastly, we have number one, and I don't think anyone is really surprised by this. It's just Watcher Size again, and I do think that this is one of the best design uniques of all time, and one of the most fun things that you can get from a drop. So every time you do Uber Elder or Elder, you see a Watcher Size or Prismatic Jewel on the ground, you're never really sad to ID it, right? Because you always feel like you can win this jackpot. You can get the next Hatred Crit Watcher Size with Vitality and Precision. And it's just this gambling and makes every single time it drops a fun experience, right? 
So the most common watcher's eyes that you usually will see is hatred and precision watcher eyes. Precision is one that can generally be fit into a lot of builds because you can just run a level 1 precision and then you can get a benefit of multi or attack damage which is pretty generic. And, and lastly we have hatred and hatred is mainly used because a lot of people are running the fierce conversion tornado shot and it also helps out with cold damage or base crit. Now another common watcher's eyes that a lot of people use is summon skeletons. Summon skeletons is like the second most popular build of the league or third. And almost every single build uses determination, right? So we go look at POA Ninja. I'm pretty sure if we go look at build, number one skill is actually determination. So every single build can pretty much benefit from a determination watcher's eye. And summon skeletons is no different, right? So lastly, what can we actually conclude from this top five list is that the meta really defines what uniques show up on this list. And you can definitely see this with Dying Sun and other items. And the new uniques have definitely added a bunch of build power and customization and a lot of them are just really versatile. Now one thing you might be wondering is where's Omniscience? Now Omniscience is way down over here. This is actually the full list. Now Omniscience is down here because it is more of a niche item in that it's mainly for elemental damage builds that benefit from elemental penetration. So if you're like running an Ignite build or something like that or you're doing a Fizz build or something, it doesn't really benefit you to run Omniscience. And also, a lot, Ashes of the Star also cannibalizes Omniscience in that it's just straight up better for builds that are like Aura Stacker, right? So, very, very cool that they actually added two endgame unique items that are very, very popular in the Amulet slot. Now, Mage Blood and Headhunter have equal representation. I'm pretty sure this is not the case because POE Ninja only parses like the top like 15,000 characters but I think like in the general population Headhunter is probably much much more common than Mage Blood. And Melody of the Flesh the one that I introduced that gives you 90% res if you have 90% resist in one element is incredibly powerful when paired with Aegis Aurora and these two items are almost go hand in hand and the other builds that don't use Aegis Aurora are Aura Stackers with Melting of the Flesh, and just, just allows you to get so much synergy. I think you get like 5% max cold res, gives you a bunch of block and recovery. So super, super good job by GGG this time around. I hope they don't really nerf any of these uniques that they added too much, besides maybe Omniscience for a slight numbers tuning. And the best way to change the meta and add more usable builds is to add more meta shaping powerful uniques. And you can definitely see this in how strong Omniscience is in that it allows builds that previously didn't have the damage to be meta again. So without Omniscience, you can bet your house that Tornado Shot would not be the number one skill. And that wouldn't even, even be that crazy of a take. So the better uniques that they make, the more build diversity there is. And maybe next week we'll see a completely different top five. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more Mage Bloods mirrors and exalts to me and see you next time. Bye.